Okay, this video is to show how to um, export, import uh, a file from, let's say, SketchUp, which is an RC plane uh, to be built on foam board, $3 foam board. So here's uh, basically the model and that has been flattened and create a plan. Okay, now SketchUp um, has the option to export the file, okay, and you can export it as a 2D. And I already did this, uh, so I'm just going to walk through the process. I export it and I put it in a, in a folder as a, a AutoCAD option. I could select as an AutoCAD or I can select a DXF, okay. Now I, I prefer DXF because uh, Liburn can take a DXF, but I also I like to use um, Illustrator, and the Illustrator also takes DXF. So, um, and there is a couple of reasons for it, which I'm going to explain. So let's say I export the file to DXF, okay, and I have then um, I go to Illustrator, and in Illustrator because let's move back again, because this is a size 20 by 30 basically and um, board that's going to be cut out of a foam board dollar tree foam board and it requires to uh, be use a laser which is about that size so um, my laser is not that big my laser bed is in fact uh, 16 by 24 so that's kind of my laser. Um, so the, the board is not going to fit, okay? It, it's only 24 by uh, 16, and the board is supposed to be 20 by 30. So what I need to do is basically split this uh, uh, board, or foam board, uh, cuts in two pieces. The top piece and the bottom piece. So for that, I created in Illustrator a template. So I cast a custom template. For instance, this 20 by 29.75 inches. So that's kind of template. Okay. So now if I import here, let's go ahead and place it. The um, DXF over here and align it. Okay, I do need two uh, R boards, and that's exactly the size that I want. However, I still need to have some referential marks uh, for the cut. So rather than this just basic template, I picked another template, I made another template, a custom template which has a registration marks. So this is the template, which has halfway registration marks. These registration marks are just a circle with an X in it. Okay, so I'm going to import here the um, file, the DXF file, and I'm going to put it over here. I'm going to it's calling me about the colors, it's fine. I'm going to click OK and put it right here. Same thing, align it to the top, the right, and I'm going to need, I can see that the board, the board has already the registration marks, and I'm going to need two boards. So I'm going to um, go here and click away and edit the artwork. And I'm going to add a second page. Exit the board settings. And notice that the second page doesn't have the registration marks. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to press Control Alt and duplicate. I'm just going to put it right next to it. So I'm just going to look closer now. Align it too. Horizontal alignment is what I need. Okay. So that seems to be fine. Horizontal alignment. And the left and right, let's go double check. It has to be just enough that it fits both. Maybe a little bit more to the side. Let's go ahead and push it here. 
that looks good uh, the the drawing doesn't go any further than this registration mark so that's fine and then I am going to save this file now I'm gonna I like to save it the way it is notice that this file already has colors and it's got three colors black red and blue I especially put that color in, in particular lines because the black are colors uh, is the color for the cuts that I want to make blue will be basically half cut kind of halfway of it and the reds are just marks so basically I'm using the laser printer as referential marks okay for banding or gluing or anything all right so they're just referential so I'm gonna go ahead and save this file I'm gonna save it as I'm gonna call it b6 uh, here and save it okay just normal now I'm gonna go to uh, Lightroom and in Lightroom um, one thing that we got to be careful is that the settings in Lightroom so Lightroom sometimes detects the file um, scale correctly and sometimes doesn't so I like to go to the settings and make sure that I go to files and go and turn off the auto detect I don't want it to auto detect I want it to be just off and select in millimeter and that would be my size because Lightroom works in millimeter and then I'm going to um, either import or select open uh, if I say import it reads all the type of files and I'm going to select this version 6 over here okay and I zoom out a little bit as uh, so you can see the bed is just about that size horizontally and my prints are larger so all my cuts I'm going to call it prints however um, so that's what I'm saying the registration marks are just kind of halfway where it the maximum area that the laser will cut now this will require two uh, foam boards but in, a f in two and four basically parts okay so right now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna give myself a little bit of space I'm gonna, first of all the whole thing is as is group so I'm gonna ungroup it and now I have two parts. I'm going to select this part right here. I am going to group this part just so I can keep it together. I'm just going to move it aside so I can have some room to work. Next, um, notice that this is a whole group, but the registration marks are not part of it. So you basically when you save the file, you save it with a layer. So these registration marks by itself are a different group, which is fine. It's exactly what I need. Okay. So right now I'm going to um, keep it that way, but I do need to remove the border. I don't need this border around it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this and ungroup it. And once I ungroup and continues to be grouped, notice that there must be a nested group. Ungroup it again. Okay, that seems to be okay. So I can select the interior, which is fine, and the exterior is a group. So I'm just going to click delete one more time and delete. Okay, so now I don't have the border around it. So that's what I want. And these are individual pieces, lines, okay, and that's fine. No need. I can I can group it as well if I want to, but I don't need it right now. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a square, and we're going to create a basically um, a mask. Okay, so I'm just going to move my mouse close to the uh, crosshair over here. I'm just going to make a little square, a rectangular there, just any size. Notice that by moving my mouse too close to the hairline, it automatically aligns to the cross line. So that's a good thing. Next, I'm going to stretch this all the way to the other piece. 
Now, this is good, and I, vertically I don't need to align that way. So I can I can go over. In fact, more and more. It's the horizontal parts what's important. Why? Because that's where it's going to be cut half of. It. Because that's what we're going to do now. We're going to stretch it all the way up. Same thing on top. It can be all the way as long as we enclose the area that we wanted to uh, split. So now I'm going to click away and um, before I perform a cut I am going to grab this group and I'm going to hide it. Okay, and before I hide it, it's, notice that it's red. So I want that to be printed when I perform the cut. But for now, I'm just going to move it to, let's say, 27. I'm going to put a different color so it creates a new layer. So as a new layer, I'm going to actually make it disappear. I'm not going to show right now. And why? I'll explain later. Okay, so now I have just the what I wanted to cut and the mask. I'm going to select both and I'm going to go to uh, cut shapes. I'm going to click on it and what it does is basically it splits the whole thing based on the mask in two pieces, one top and one bottom and it groups them. Okay, so now I'm going to bring back the uh, registration marks and I'm going to actually make the registration marks red again because I want it to print as a registration marks. I'm going to select the registration marks. I'm going to make it red again. And I am going to actually duplicate it. Click on it and select duplicate. So there is two, one on top of the other. All right, that's going to help me because now that I have selected one registration mark, I'm going to shift and click the bottom group, which is the bottom part. I'm going to select right click and then group it. Once it's grouped, the registration mark on the bottom part, I can kind of select it and push my mouse, not my mouse, my arrow down um, a couple times, three times perhaps, one, two, three, maybe four or five. Yeah, that seems to be fine. Five or six. There you go, six. All right, so basically I separate them, but they're still aligned. They're separated in, the, in just exactly where the cut exists. Okay? All right, so both have the registration marks, the top and bottom. So I still need to group the top now. I'm going to select the top and group. Okay? One more thing. Uh, I'm going to group the whole thing. So I can keep it together. All right, perfect. So once that's all done, then it, this is ready. Now, one more thing we're going to do is we're going to align that this whole thing is in the middle. Um, so I'm going to select this. This could be the alignment where I want it to go. So I'm going to select the top. And I want to do the top to be right to the edge. Let's say I put zero. So notice that it is right on the line. but if I do that, it's not going to cut here. So I really wanted to do, let's say, 5 millimeter. So I am going to have a little room over there so I can have a cut. All right, perfect. And also the center, I want it to be 300, and the middle of my laser, because it's 600 wide, so 300 in the middle. So I'm going to do 300 right there. And that's perfect. So once we do that, we can send the job to the to the laser. And what the laser is going to do is going to cut everything that is enclosed into this tray, which shows us a grid, is going to cut there. And the laser will stop in every little line to the border right here. Okay. Once it's completed, I am going to flip the page. Okay. I'm not going to use this flip. FYI, I'm not going to use this because if I do this, what's going to do is going to basically flip like this, and that's not correct. If we do that, that's going to ruin our cut. So what we really need to do is just like we're going to do on the board. Once it's cut, we're going to grab the board, pull it out, and turn it around, basically um, 360 degrees. 
uh, 180 degrees basically and put the, the part that is not cut and then we're going to send the next job so for that we what we're going to need to do is we're going to uh, rotate and rotate is basically uh, you can select it over here or you can press the comma uh, a couple times so I'm going to let's say I printed if the first part or cut it the first time and then I'm going to rotate it. Now I'm going to press a comma one time and two times. And that's the correct orientation. Now, I don't want to send it like this yet because otherwise it's going to try to cut this part, which is part of on the, on the bed. So same thing as before. I am going to try to move it so it, the, the bottom part is away. I could have given it a bit more room, but I didn't. And also, um, you want to make it at exactly just like we did before, 300 in the middle, and 5, well, this could be 5 millimeter, it could be more. In this case, I could give it a little bit more, just like that. And uh, it's ready to go to the laser. Now, you can't just send it to the laser and expect that everything will match. What we need to do is we need to do the uh, option that says print and cut okay what this does is basically aligns the head of the laser with the registration marks so when we do that we select this button over here and the, uh, the uh, library asks to select the first point okay the first point will be this this guy right here the first point what the uh, Lightburn is going to do is going to ask you to align it to little align the laser to the registration mark that is already printed. That means this one that's already printed on the actual foam board. You're going to move the foam board and gonna align it to the laser head. Okay, either the red dot or either you're gonna have to do a couple tests there to pinpoint the actual burning dot that's going to be in right in the middle okay so you're gonna to have to kind of fire a dot okay to make sure that it is correctly aligned this is millimeters in fact if the you know if you off for one or two millimeters it's going to be off to one or two millimeters in the line so you don't want to do that you want to be as exact as possible okay and once you select that first, um, the software will ask you to select the second point. The second point is going to be uh, this other guy right here. Okay. Uh, also, once you, you align it and, and select it, the line burn is going to align the whole drawing to the lines that were already cut. So every line will match its respective continuing line. That way we can complete the full cut on the laser. Okay, so that is very important. So and that's the whole process. So starting from um, basically AutoCAD or SketchUp uh, from a model that we had designed. Okay, and calculate for a, a cut, and then export to. Um, um, Illustrator and Illustrator put it into a template with the registration marks which are kind of halfway of the foam board based on my laser if you have a bigger laser you won't have this problem and then um, in um, Lightburn basically perform the cut uh, cut to shape duplicating the registration marks once you print the top, you turn around 180 degrees, the, the drawing, and then uh, find the um, alignment with the uh, print and cut alignment head of the laser and the software. And then we should have a complete um, cut of the foam board, which is larger than the laser bed. And that's it for this video. Bye-bye.